beginning of this work, the first of his acts was long ago. Ages ago, I was set up as the first before the beginning of the earth. When there were no depths, I was brought forth. When there were no springs abounding with water, before the mountains had been shaped, before the hills, I was brought forth. When he had not yet made earth and fields for the world's first bits of soil, when he established the heavens, I was there. When he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he made the firm the skies above, when he established the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea its limit, so that the waters might not transgress his command. When he marked out the foundations of the earth, then I was beside him like a master worker, and I was daily his delight, rejoicing before him always, rejoicing in his inhabited world, and delighting in the human race. Word of the Lord. Psalm 8 will read responsibly. I'll read the plan and we'll please only read uh, the old part. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon, and the stars you have set in their courses. Yet you have made them a little less than divine. With glory and honor you crown them. All flocks and cattle, even the wild beasts of the field. The oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. And a reading from Romans chapter 5. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. Not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit and has been given to us. Please join me in saying the gospel affirmation. Hallelujah. Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Hallelujah. The Holy Gospel is according to John, the 16th chapter, verses 12 to 15. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. When the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth. For he will not speak on his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. He will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. All that the Father has is mine. For this reason, I said that he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So, what do you see out here other than many messages and sermons? Thank goodness. Some things are invisible. And I don't know that we have time to figure out who the youngest person is in the room today. The parents. Oh, yeah, volunteers. <laughs> Some people are in front of me. <laughs> All right, I won't pick on anybody in particular. Uh, but talking about the Trinity is a pretty challenging thing to do, no matter how old you are. And trying to identify, oh, I'm up there. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> no question about that. Uh, on the blank slide, it's hard sometimes to see God. It's hard sometimes uh, to try and uh, recognize God in our midst. And it's really hard to try and define what God is like and who God is. In fact, there were arguments for over a hundred years trying to talk about who God is. That's why there are a whole bunch of different creeds. We read through the Athanasian Creed at Bible on Wednesday. It's about two pages long. It's not even in the Red Kingdom anymore. 
and it's the outgrowth of people trying to describe God. So instead of trying to use words to talk about the Trinity, I have a couple uh, handy dandy little tricks up my sleeve. One is called electricity. And uh, this is a, a favorite fan of mine. How many blades are on here? Three. Three. You probably knew that because it's Holy Trinity Sunday, right? <laughs> and uh, the cool thing is, and Tammy fixed this for me because it was not going real fast yesterday. Thank you, Tammy. How many blades do you see now? One. Yeah, Dennis, how's it feel in your hair? <laughs> you feel blown right past, yeah. right? Yeah. I have a bad hair day. Yeah. <laughs> you want a bad hair day too, old? Does that feel good? Can you feel it? I'm going to just leave it right here. How's that? Oh! <laughs> you won't do that. You won't do that. See, when God's at work, you can't turn God on and off. But God does mess things up sometimes. Sometimes the best laid plans, best laid papers, the order that we have everything in. Uh, and that's how the Trinity works. I don't have enough words to describe what God is like. So we have to take them apart, like three separate uh, blades in a pan. But when God is busy and active, you can't tell them apart. It's all one. I'm doing this for you, Mary. So another way to talk about God as the Trinity is to talk about Father, the growth, Son, get it because it's yellow, and Holy Spirit, a little bit bright. And when we're trying to juggle, life gets to be a little bit too much. We didn't know I could do that. No. <laughs> so we might call upon Father, Son, or Holy Spirit when we're trying to juggle life. But the reality is, we keep juggling this focus in the middle. We can't watch any given moment. We have to focus on the middle. And that's how God pulls us through life focusing on the middle, pushing us from behind, helping us to take care of all that juggling stuff. And loving us in the midst of it all. Let's pray. For God, no matter what we're juggling, no matter how we're trying to look cool or be cool, we thank you for being Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, for being Creator, Redeemer, and Sanctifier, for being all those different names and so much more that we can't put you into words, we can't put you into a box, we can't even explain it. But thank you for knowing us and loving us and pouring yourself into us anyway. Please continue to guide us through your Holy Spirit. Please continue to forgive us and teach us through Jesus. And please continue to surround us with all the good things of creation, shelter, food, and beauty. In Jesus' name. Amen. I have coloring pages for people that want coloring pages. Uh, so, anybody need crayons yet? Uh, I wrote a story. I, I wrote a story, you know, that we've been using some children's stories uh, throughout the year. This one is it's written by me. Uh, it goes as kind of like Goldilocks and the Three Bears, but I didn't want to lock this into Goldilocks, so I called it Christian. And the three bears. It's the story of the Holy Trinity. So you can help me out. How's it gonna start? Beautiful, beautiful. Just once upon a time. Christian went for a walk in the wilderness, and along the way, Christian found a church. When no one answered, Christian walked right in. There was a table. Imagine a communion table. This one had three bowls of porridge. Christian was hungry for the word of God. So Christian tasted from the first bowl. And help me out, the first bowl was? Beautiful. And the second bowl was? Too cold. And the last bowl was? Just right. You guys are so good. And Christian ate it all. And Jesus said, taste and see. Well fed, Christian felt tired. So Christian walked into the living room and found three chairs. The first was? The second, careful, this is tricky. The second was? Too big, too. Okay. 
And the third and the last smallest was just until Tristan settled down. And the chair broke into pieces. It's only funny when it's not you. <laughs> it's not weird. So Christian left to sleep. The first bed was the second bed was and the third bed was please don't fall asleep again. Christian fell asleep. And as Christian slept, the three bears came home. The three bears came home and said, Someone's been eating my porridge. Someone's been sitting in my chair. Someone's been sleeping in my bed and is still there. Here comes the twist, the suspense. Christian is not like Papa, God the Creator. Christian cannot bear the weight of truth like that. Christian is not like Mama, God the Savior. Christian cannot bear the weight of the cross. Christian is like babies. God the Spirit, Christian can bear witness to all that God does for us, with us, and in us. So it's time for a new ending. Goldilocks, she never went back. In this new ending, when our soul is bare before God, God's wisdom knows the truth of us and still loves us enough to send the only begotten one to die and take away our sins. God's wisdom knows that we will stray from loving our neighbors as ourselves. So instead of needing to remember that in our heads, these commandments are written in our hearts and give us a passion through all of life, giving us meaning and purpose, loving our neighbor in deed and in word. God's wisdom knows that we need forgiveness, mercy, grace, and love, and we cannot earn it by our own merit. So instead, God gives it freely and abundantly. So here's the bare necessity. In deeds and words of daily life, Jesus says very simply, our responsibility, our purpose is to go bear witness to this good news, this God news. So let's do that. Whether we're hanging out with Roy B. Bear, or whether we're outside, we bear witness through love of neighbor, love of God, bearing for self and creation. We'll bear witness to this good news in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. The words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, not just barely, but all the way in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Give another uh, dance kind of tune. Come join the dance of Trinity. Uh, ELW for two verses.
in this new life we are able to profess our faith, please join me in professing the faith of the words of the 19th Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the Maker of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternally begotten of the Father, the God of the God, the light of the night, the God of the God, 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 the one being with the Father, who is in all the years of the day, for us and for our salvation, to be made out of heaven, so the incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified and upon his power, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven. And you see it at the right hand of the Father. We will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And if any will not know him, we believe in the Holy Spirit, and the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let's pray together. One God, giver of life, you established peace through your Son and gave your church the hope of sharing in your glory. Enliven us by your Spirit to speak and act in love for the sake of the world. God of grace, hear our prayer. Creator of all, you rejoice in creation and have given humankind responsibility for the works of your hand. Instill in everyone your spirit of care for the earth, especially in areas threatened by ecological devastation. God of grace, hear our prayer. Loving Redeemer, you delight in the human race. Move the hearts of world leaders to seek wisdom, speak truth, and care for all endangered by poverty prejudice, or violence, further the work of international collaboration and peacemaking. God of grace, yeah. abiding comforter, you call out to all who live. Restore severed relationships and protect children who lack trustworthy caregivers. Grant hope to those who are experiencing fear, pain, or grief. Those in our hearts and those we name out loud. Those unknown to us. We're all preparing for surgery and healing from surgery and hospitalization, including Dominic, Erica, Ruth, Judy, Deborah, Ken, Deb, Wendy, and Angel. Those with chronic conditions, including Darlene, Faye, Anna, Chuck, and Carol, Linda, Joe, John, Alex, June, Debbie, Bambi, Paul, and Mark, Virginia, Linda, AJ, and Sophia, Nina, Rick, Angie, and Debbie, Sandy, Phil, Max, and Betty, Jake, Darlene, Gary, and Anne, Anna, and Zoe, Amy, and Gina, Ron, Barbara, and Silka, Hong, Bill, and Jance, Pauline, Mike, Norman, Kathleen, Mike S., and Tucker. For those on hospice and comfort care, for Shirley, Earl, Nancy, and Evelyn. For others, including the 530 million people that have been and are afflicted with COVID, as well as Bill, thank you for his safe procedure this week, Tammy, and Adam, for Tyler, and Tina and her family, for Bernadette, Ralph, and Paul, for Sue and Carl, Linda, Bill, and Lauren, for Benita and Kenita, for Brian and Kathy, Mike, Shirley, and Richard, for Rachel, for everybody in the military, including Lily and all involved in Ukraine, the United Nations, the Russian military, and support action. Lord, we pray for first responders, we pray for violence victims, including those from the shootings in Buffalo and Uvalde and the 24 other known recent mass shootings, and the many unknown, God of grace. Holy free, you are community, and you create community. Build up ministries that support those who are isolated or lonely. Give endurance as we nurture vital relationships in our congregation and beyond. Your ministries, including Bear Creek Camp, United Lutheran Seminary, Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services, and so many more. God of grace. Yeah. 
Holy God, we remember your saints, for their strong faith and witness even unto death. Especially today, remember the Emmanuel line. We're meeting for Bible study and welcome them a stranger. Where that stranger grew up in the Lutheran church. Help us to bear witness that racism and hatred are never your plan. And soul grieving families. Stir up in us to resolve to end the sin of white supremacy and pursue the courageous path of justice. We lament the 6.2 million people who died of COVID and the diminishment of life that so many have endured through hatred and crime, those who've lost their lives and those who survived. Lord, we give you thanks also for those that we mourn, Sylvia and Pat, who will have their funeral services yesterday for Sylvia and Pat on Friday. <laughs> For those that died during COVID who were not able to be gathered around and mourn. And for those who died more recently, for Herda, Bob, and Louise. We pray consolation on their families and their loved ones. Help us to remember their stories and their legacies. God of grace. Hear our prayer. Blessing and guiding spirit, we praise you that in the midst of chaos and questions, you lead us not into temptation. And you deliver us from evil through the cross, the cross that you bear. You give us love and guidance in daily life toward healthy living. Lord, we thank you for joy in our family of faith, the graduates in 2022, including Josh and Peter, for Eagle Scouts, including Josh Beth, for March and starting to grow and bloom, for anniversaries, including that for Mary Lou and for Phil, and for the one that Jean and Roy would celebrate. For birthdays, including Lois and Sandra, and what would have been birthdays for Roy and for Joyce. Lord God, you continue to bring healing also. We thank you for the healing for David, for Alberta, for Dennis, for all those who name in our hearts. God of grace. <laughs> God of every time and every place, in Jesus' name, filled with your Holy Spirit, we entrust these spoken prayers and those in our hearts into your holy keeping. Amen. Trinity has some beautiful songs, so while we're in the mood of prayer, let's sing together the hymn that's 413. Holy, 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 for God. This is one and four.
offer up that prayer and praise to God along with our other offerings of ourselves, our time, and our abilities, the offerings that we give financially to the ministry. Let us pray for all of these together. God of abundance, you have set before us the path of our and have given your son your witness, strengthen us to labor and pursue, and give us to bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the earth, church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. But in the night which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, Jesus took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. Together we pray as Jesus taught. Our Father, Father Lord, Lord in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses. As we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the night is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite you to taste and see that the Lord is good. Just take the bread. The body of Christ is given for you. Mm. Yeah. And the grape juice, the blood of Christ, is shed for you. Mm -hmm. We say that the safety promise of forgiveness, love, and grace for free. Thanks to you. Together we boldly proclaim, the Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Jesus. In the body and blood of Jesus Christ, God with us, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let's pray together. God of abundance, with this bread of life and cup of salvation, you have united us with Christ, making us one with all your people. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit, that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world. And continue forever for the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. To those who are unable to be with us and those who are visited, we ask this blessing. Gracious God, loving all your family with a mother's tender care, as you sent the angel to feed Elijah with heavenly bread, assist those who set forth to share your word and sacrament with those who are sick, homebound, and imprisoned in any way. In your love, and care and nourish and strengthen those who will receive this sacrament and give us all the comfort of your abiding presence through the body and blood of your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And may the God of peace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit bless you and comfort you and show us the path of life this day and always. Amen. 
guys are singing beautifully, so I look forward to singing this uh, sending hymn, but please don't go after the hymn of God is Almighty Word, 673, 673. Again, two verses. the love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. We ask you as a sense uh, to, <laughs> as one of the other screens says, uh, to remain in your seats. Uh, Amanda, thank you for gathering up. Oh, you want that up? It's a community that's not exactly the leftover bread and fish and small baskets. <laughs> just a reminder, as we get ready for the congregation meeting, let's put things around up here a little bit. Uh, next week, June 18th and 19th, uh, I'm away to talk sharing again as leading worship thanks to um, a shared arrangement over at Lobotsville. It's a special Father's Day of Servants next week. Our congregational meeting is today, so I ask you to remain in your seats. And if you do have offerings that you'd like to give, the offering plates uh, by each of the, the doors on the way out, or you can give electronically for mail offerings in as well. So thank you for doing that. 
discussed uh, two options. One is disregarding all COVID metrics and have no required restrictions going forward. Returning to eating, drinking, sitting, no distancing, dropping all COVID mitigation and mask would be optional. 100% capacity of gatherings. The second option would be <laughs> COVID metrics and have no state mitigation according to the CDC. The, the, Center of, uh, what is that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> CDC level. And uh, we follow the diagram, which is CDC perverts count, which as of uh, June 9th and this morning is green. Greg, can you put up those uh, colors and what you see? So you know what we might be voting on. If I call ahead, excuse me. Give me a minute. Sure. Where are you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, Greg is finding that. Uh, there. Found it. So, and this is, this, this is kind of uh, born through the uh, Synod, Northeastern Pennsylvania Synod Convention that Larry Schwartz and I have passed for the anniversary uh, the last two days. And uh, it worked well. Speakers will take turns speaking for and against the motion. Uh, people who have a microphone at all times so they can hear and understand with all of us, uh, especially with masks on. Um, each speaker will have not more than two minutes to speak to the issue we address at any given time. Disagreement is fine, as long as civil behavior is used and the member working to disagreement is how church and communities are built. Let's be civil. So, um, right now, as I said, first county is. Uh, Community risk level is low, it's green. I, I thought it was kind of cool that the uh, three little balls for three colors. Uh, there's green, yellow, and red. It's orange there, but uh, so green uh, is where Brooks County is now. It has been for the last couple of days. And Greg, can you find that other thing I sent you? You sent me more than one? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay, I can read it. So according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. I'm sorry, I missed the second part. That's okay. The, uh, the low level uh, CDC uh, recommends staying up to date with COVID-19 vaccines and get tested if you have symptoms. The medium level or yellow 
is if you're at high risk for severe illness, talk to your healthcare provider about whether you need to wear a mask and take other precautions. Stay up to date with COVID-19 vaccines, get tested if you have symptoms. The high level or red is wear a mask indoors in public. Stay up to date with COVID-19 vaccines. Get tested if you have symptoms. And additional precautions may be needed for people at high risk for severe illness. So those are the three levels. Uh, and I and I thank I, I need to thank uh, Pastor and the Get to Nest Connected Task Force, previous councils, present council for wrestling with this issue. I know it's a it's a hot button issue for a lot of people. But we decided as a council that let's have the congregation vote on mitigation. Then there. 12 people come and tell me what to do. Yeah, go. <laughs> Sorry. So people may choose to wear an mask at any time. People with symptoms of a positive test or exposure to someone with COVID should wear a mask. Masks are recommended in indoor public transportation settings and may be required in other places by local or state authorities. So, um, and, and the reason, one of the reasons we brought this to, to you is that we don't want to keep litigating this in council. If we turn to code red, I don't want to. My preference was not to bring it to council again and discuss it and beat the, beat the dead horse. And uh, 